Cloud platforms provide large-scale infrastructure that would have been unattainable for startups and hobbyists a decade ago. The flip side is that it's now very easy to configure an architecture for yourself that costs way beyond your means. In this video, I'm going to show you how to spin up a managed Postgres database on Google Cloud for less than $10 a month. We'll approach this by first talking about Cloud SQL, then talking about the $10 Postgres instance, and then we'll walk through the steps to actually set up your database. Managing your own servers can take a lot of time and cause a lot of headaches. Ultimately, any time you're spending tending to your servers is time that is not being spent on building your business. Cloud SQL helps us by taking away the overhead involved with both setting up and maintaining all of our database instances. And it can be done at a reasonable price if you make the right choices. So if you look around at the Google Cloud pricing calculator, we can see that there are actually a range of options that might end up in around the $10 range. If you're looking for like the standard instances, those are mostly gonna push the $40, $50 range per month for the smallest versions of those. And that's a little bit much for our hobbyist and startup uh, use cases. The one that I recommend to most people if they're doing a small project and just trying to get started is this DBF1 micro, which is going to be our shared instance. Um, with an SSD of 10 gigs and then a backup of 10 gigs. The backup itself only costs an extra $2 and it allows you to actually test that out, which you'll want sometime in production. And for $10, getting a nice SSD with a reasonable shared core is a pretty good deal. From Google Cloud estimates, even these small instances can handle up to 4.8 megabytes per second in write throughput and about 300 IOPS in both read and write, which is operations per second. Now this won't scale you to anything super large um, or if you have a lot of concurrent customers, but definitely for like hobbyist projects, um, for things that are relatively light and probably for most workloads that early stage startups have, this is a good place to get started. And because you're in Google Cloud, this is an easy way to just scale up to more if you actually need it. We can share these exact numbers um, on when we create our database, but for now, let's configure that. So here I'm in my Google Cloud project. I've gone to the Cloud SQL panel, and if we click Create Instance, we can create an instance. I'll be using Postgres for this, so we will go Postgres. And here you can see the summary of what we'll be creating, the estimates that Google thinks we will get out of this instance. Uh, obviously this is much higher than what I've told you. And the reason that is, is because this instance that we are defaulting to is much larger than the one that we want, the $10 one. So the first thing that we'll need to change to get our $10 instance is to go to single zone availability. And then we need to open up this configuration options down here to make it smaller. Um, here you can see that it gives us a high memory to start with, which is way more expensive than we want. So to get that DBF1 micro, we need to go to shared core, and then we'll pick the smallest one here. For storage, um, SSD is good. Uh, it ends up costing like a dollar or two more at the 10 gigabyte state. So let's keep that. Um, and then the next thing to take a look at is the backups. I'd recommend just keeping the backups here because it only costs an extra $2 at 10 gigs and you probably want backups anyway. One thing you might want to try to do is to go to HDD instead of SSD. This will also save you a dollar or two, but if we take a look at these estimates over here, it loses quite a lot uh, of power of scale. Uh, so it's what, about 75% off of the disk throughput and then the IOPS is like, you know, 90% smaller. So for that extra dollar or two, I really think the SSD is going to be better for you. And that's it. Um, once you have it and set up a name here, you can just click uh, Create Instance down here, and you should have your Cloud SQL set up in a few minutes. If you want to learn more about how I host my full stack apps on Google Cloud for cheap, check out this video. And then if you want recommendations for the technologies that I use for each part of my full stack apps, my front end, my back end, and my databases, check out this one.